Welcome to the Bondi Scrapper channel. Uh, today's pull apart is one of those jobs that I have been putting off for, oh, I would say 12 months now from when I first, I think I picked this thing up on the first day that I started scrapping seriously. And uh, I think, I think that it is a uh, compressor or part of a compressor, possibly an air separator. Um, as you can see there, it says Copeland Compliant Scroll, and uh, it's got other warnings and things, but doesn't tell you too much. It's got a part number of, um, oh, here we are. It's a model ZR94KCTFD522. I haven't bothered to look that up. Maybe someone can look it up for me. That'd be good fun. Um, the only thing that uh, makes me think that it's a, some form of motor is it's got uh, some electrical connections there uh, but apart from that I'm a bit clueless uh, it is heavy it is so heavy it weighs I would say 70 kilos maybe more because I can only just deadlift it and and I know for a fact that I can lift up a 66 kilo person so um, and that was easier than this thing I'll tell you uh, I can't cut a straight line for love nor money so I've Put a little white line there. I'm going to get the gloves on. I'm going to have the safety specs. Got the trusty Makita grinder out. It's now hitting about 20 or 30 years old. I don't know, but my God, it just keeps going. Um, so without further ado, let's uh, cut this in half. I've already um, had the oil draining from it for about nine months. Uh, drilled a hole in the, in the base of it just there. And there's, uh, I think I drilled a hole in the top of it to, uh, so it wouldn't vacuum up. But yeah, let's see what it's all about.
so the bottom part wasn't moving for me uh, so I uh, cut around the top part ran out of discs for the Makita so that's four discs started with the little AEG battery powered thing um, whenever it gets too much of a load on it decides to stop I don't know whether that's uh, a problem or factory uh, and so we look in here somewhere let's have a look it's got a little handy dandy light and yeah this looks like it's a compressor so I don't look oh, can you see in there there's some um, electrical windings by the looks of it yep so there's a big motor in there so we just somehow or another got to get that out what a pain in the neck um, this is one of those never again jobs I'd say uh, but, uh, I think they're about a dollar each those things um, Certainly the Makita brand ones lasted about a quarter of the time that the uh, the ones from, I think it's Total Tools. Those red things, X-Torque or whatever they are. So uh, I'm going to continue on on this, see what I can do. I think my next step will be to undo, undo those uh, bolts there if I can. See what happens when I pull that off. three off using proper tools and one using the grinder that comes off definitely a compressor I think that's what they call it I don't know I don't know, I don't know what they call it there's another bit at least that'll go in as um, clean heavy steel so that's a that's a plus oh it's a nice bit of alloy there by the feel of it and then what happens and see that I'm going to have to cut down there and of course where I did that cut is just totally useless because it comes up against a really solid bit but I might be able to just do it very very thinly and get that oh, um, but I've just about had enough of this one uh, I think I've been at it for an hour now maybe more um, and I'm sweating sweating pouring off me Anyway, I'm going to turn you guys off. I'm going to attack it with the grinder a bit more, see what happens. All right, I'm just about done in. Um, got that big chunky thing. Where out? Got that big chunky thing off the uh, off the end of the motor. But we can see it's got a lot of copper in it, so it will bear nicely. But um, unfortunately, the design of it. So I've put a number of splits in the casing here. And it's all being held in place by, if you can see it down there, the pipe. So, somehow or another I've got to cut that out. And, as we all know, when you start to get a bit tired, you make mistakes. So I really don't want to make a mistake. I've made a massive mess here, so I need to clean up. So that's me for today. Uh, we'll come back to this one another day. Nine months later. Welcome to the Bondi Scrapper channel. Well, welcome back to the same video, I guess, because uh, here we are several months. Nine months later. Many months. I don't even remember the last time that I looked at this damn thing. Nine months later. Uh, we got to a certain point and I think we ran out of uh, cutting blades, cutting discs and um, then various uh, COVID related things happened and we were locked in and locked out and locked sideways. Uh, I eventually got around to getting some more discs uh, and then I kept on uh, doing other inverted commas far more important things than this one uh, because it's turned into a bit of a time-wasting nightmare to be honest 
and uh, I can thoroughly recommend at this point that anyone that gets a big compressor like this that weighs 60 kilos just put it in as a compressor um, there's no amount of copper or you know for the amount of time wasted I'm sure someone else has got a far better setup to uh, process these than this little black duck but anyway we've got to get into it last I think when, when I left you last time we've got to cut down through there got to cut across there and cut down join up with that with that cut there um, I'm serious I've got the actual corded angle grinder out even though it's a 100 mil one but it's certainly got more oomph than the 125 mil battery powered one and uh, I've just got to work out where I can set you guys up so you can see um, and as you can see we're on the we're on the very clean remodified fixed up workbench that the only thing I can fault with it is that it's so light that as you do hacksawing and chiseling it moves sideways and eventually ends up level with that so I'm um, gonna gotta try and work out any ideas on how to fix that one up it's just as I said it hasn't got enough grunt to it um, needs more weight possibly bolting to the floor but I can't really do that because I don't own the floor possibly bolting to the back of the cage I'm not quite sure that that's going to work as, as it should but it might um, possibly add another shelf in the middle and stack lots of weight on the shelf in the middle uh, who knows suggestions suggestions down in the comments area please anyway let's get stuck into this Okay, so repositioning, a little bit of a uh, little bit of tapping with the uh, with the chisel just to free it up there and free it up just there, and I think yeah, we've got a little just a bit of. Uh, she's still caught on the corner down here. that thing off well I thought there would have been a little pipe coming out of there which was joining it onto there and obviously that is not the case which is a bit of a worry really because um, because I thought that's what was holding it all in so this is the bit where we get to rethink so what do we got here what's moving and what's not tank through a screwdriver your friend in the workshop is that moving upwards oh yeah there you go. what's happening things are going to just be like razors all those cut cut edges so you got to be careful where you put the, put the fingers bit of a life lesson on that one I reckon so that's moving I'm just going to take the light here and have a bit of a look and okay it doesn't seem to be attached anywhere there. So we get it right in, right at the back. Get that one right in at the back. This onto a flat. Flat surface.
So that's the spacer off, which is made of steel. So there's something definitely holding us back in this little schmozzle that we got happening here. There's like a little tripod down the bottom. Man, I don't know what I'm doing, I'll be honest. If you thought that at any point in time, sadly mistaken. Um, so I'm just going to try and cut that leg out of the tripod there, which hopefully will um, loosen it up to make it come out. Truly stuck on there. Okay, and just to uh, just to clarify, this is definitely an entertainment video rather than an instructional one because, uh, man, this is just um, an epic an epic story. And uh, I kind of don't know what I'm doing. Well, I definitely don't know what I'm doing because I've never done one of these before. It was just a bit of a suck it at sea type thing. Okay, so to get this out. There's like a tripod down the bottom, a frame that's like a tripod, and it's attached in three places to this outer casing. The tripod is alloy. It must have a steel, some steel inserts in it, such as uh, little dowel pins or possibly even a, a, blank, a, a, a screw with no head in it. Um, you could see there were little dimples in the case here where it had been tack welded on to hold it in place. Uh, here I thought, oh yeah, it'd be really smart, I'll just kind of grind the dimple off until I realised that there's been an awful lot of grinding and, you know, even though I cut around it, it's still captive within the case unless, of course, I cut up there. So then on the other side I thought, okay, I'll drill it out, which has been successful, but does require a fair bit of drilling. And you need the drills, and luckily I have the drills. And so, let's, yeah, let's have a crack at that. So, that should be around about the middle, of course, because I've ground it off, and even there you can see it moving. Start with a pilot hole. Use a bit of drilling lubricant so that you don't ruin your drills go a size bigger depending on how good your drill and your drill bits are this big fella which has probably been sharpened because I know this has been sharpened many times from a previous job that I did in the painting world uh, and depending on how this one's been sharpened I'm not quite sure how it's gonna how it's gonna cut in a bit more lubricant get that on there And as I thought, it's dug in. Luckily, we weren't using a really strong drill. Otherwise, you might hurt your wrist. And then I've got another drill here. Because, yeah, we love faffing about. But I've got another drill here. through or not. It's still a bit of levering and prying. OK, 
because the idea is to drill out the spot weld. I think we might have got some in here. Well, hey, got it. So, this is a bit of a testament to perseverance over intelligence, which is becoming a bit of a theme of my videos. Let's see what happens now. I think we've got it. Yay! So this will be Steel, steel bin, this fella here, that's alloy, it's a big chunk of alloy there, steel surround, got a big circlip on the end here. See if we can knock that out. Maybe this. Yep. Give me a minute. That one launched across the room. Steel. Uh, this will be, I bet you, yeah, irony aluminium because of the iron, the steel inserts. Which are, if you want to stuff around, you could. Um, a wind shot there. There we go. If you want to stuff around, you could drill that out. But hey, how much stuffing around are we going to do? Because how many hours have we spent on this fine piece of equipment so far? And it's got the steel bit hanging on there. Um, so, irony aluminium. So, so far out of this, look, it's had about 50 kilograms of steel in it. Um, because I've already taken some steel to the scrap metal yard. And um, so 50 kilos at about 15 cents a kilo. $7.50 of metal in it. I think, I think at the start of this we weighed it in at 60, didn't we? Here's the centre shaft with the... Man, that's got a bit to it. Holy cow. So, look. You could try and put that in as irony aluminium. I tried to put in something similar to my guy not long back and he just absolutely had a cow about it. And uh, so I finished up throwing it just in with the, the iron. Um, I would say yes, that it's 90% iron and 10% aluminium. So for me, it goes in as steel. Now this is just a grinder piece. Oh, we shouldn't say that. I could be misconstrued. There we go. More steel. According to the Ian Matthews way, if you grind that off there, hold it at the other end, it'll just fall to pieces. Let's try it. Well, 
now I understand why he uses a 200mm grinder instead of a 125 <sighs> So I cut the, uh, cut the end off with the angle grinder which wasn't quite deep enough to cut through so then I resorted to getting out a hacksaw and I hacksawed it all off the remaining bit which was, you know, I probably got about halfway through halfway through the wire and then hooked into it with a hacksaw. So that's the first end that came off. The second end here, which still weighs a good five to eight kilos, I guess. It's heavy. I attempted to grab it with the uh, with the vice grips and just give it a belt. No way. For one thing, trying to hold eight kilos with one hand, a little bit much of a bridge too far. Uh, but it just wasn't budging no matter what I did. So what I finished up doing was getting, they're actually uh, the guts out of a transformer from a microwave. I sat the, uh, sat the transformer down here like that. Balanced it on them. Got a punch, couldn't find the 10mm punch, God only knows where I put that away the other night when I was uh, a little bit tired, but couldn't find it. And then proceeded to gently tap around each individual um, plug of wire. And some were up and some were down, so it's kind of... Now it's starting to hit at the bottom here, so I need a bit more height. Uh, it'll give me a little bit. So I've been working away at this, the battery on the uh, camera is getting low, which is no good, but you know, that's life, and that seems to be the flavour of this job. Uh, so these, I've had to just pull each one out individually. Once I've got them started, it's kind of not too bad. You kind of grab it. Oh, there we go, and the last three came out. So there you can see little U-shaped thingies. Um, so we might do a bit of a weigh-in. That, five kilos, easy. We're going to get the scales, do a bit of a clean-up too. Alrighty, finally we've got it finished. There's our bucket of uh, burnt copper. Let's put it on the scale. It has got some weight to it. There we go, 3.7 kilograms uh, at roughly 10 bucks a kilogram means $37. So $37 for that. And I think I worked out there was around about 50, maybe 60 kilos of um, steel in there, which I traded a lot of that in already and they just gave it to me a shred. They wouldn't accept that it was uh, heavy melt steel. Um, so uh, that was another 
seven dollars maybe eight maybe nine so forty seven dollars whereas if I would traded that in just as a compressor I think the last time I put a compressor in was about a dollar ten a kilo so for the sake of quick and easy mathematics we'll call it a dollar ten times sixty kilos so that's sixty six dollars so I've effectively halved the weight, halved the value of this thing by pulling it to bits and uh, and spent a good a good six hours I reckon doing that and yeah I didn't have a clue what I was doing uh, probably didn't have the right equipment needed some heavier duty equipment and um, but you know that's what it is so I hope that's saved a lot of you from uh, wasting a lot of time in the future and if you liked it give it a thumbs up subscribe to this channel if you feel like it because everything's optional in this world except death and taxes and um, yeah I'll see you in the next video thanks and bye